My name is Samuel Camacho and I'm a technical specialist for K2. Today we're going to be looking at a custom timer control built for the K2 Forms Designer. So basically what this control does is it essentially raises an event at a specified interval. So if we have a look at some of the um, functionality available with this control, the first uh, property that you would find is an interval property and essentially you can use this to specify the time in milliseconds between the ticks of uh, this timer. What you can also then configure uh, on your views is when this control raises the tick event it can fire any rules that you have specified against the tick event so that can be quite powerful. You can also place multiple con timer controls on a view so if you want uh, different parts of your form to refresh at different intervals or you want uh, different uh, ticking to happen at different intervals then you can actually do that. So if you have a look at some of the usage uh, of this type of control you can use it to automatically refresh views on a form so for example if you're looking at a report or a list of uh, data or uh, values you'd like to, to refresh at a certain interval so that users are aware of any changes taking place uh, in a dynamic way. The other usage is also the ability to pop up messages or alerts based on some conditions. So for example if a, an amount on the form exceeds a threshold or even a, uh, a back-end database check uh, raises a, an event based on some amount then you can actually pop up a message. Or even in an example where you're returning uh, or checking somebody's work list, you can then raise a pop-up event and say you have got a new task. So let's go and have a look at this control. So firstly I'm going to look at the actual control in Visual Studio and how this is actually built. I'm using Visual Studio 2010 and the basic structure of a control is uh, you have a constructor which is the timer control here and you can include some uh, web resources and typically this is where I include uh, some JavaScript files which basically uh, controls the behavior of the, uh, of the component and we'll go into that a little bit later. You can also add CSS files to control the, the look and feel of the control. And then you have two override um, overloaded methods here called create child controls and render control. So when you actually drag the control onto the view at design time, it will then render a control and the same at runtime. What is interesting to take note of is uh, if I'm only if you are using a design time, also particularly with this timer control, I only needed the control to render at design time so that you can actually see the clock and the control uh, um, placed on the view. But at runtime, I did not want to show anything to the end user. So in order to achieve that, I added the add child control, which is an image uh, under the render control method. But under the create child controls, I did not add that um, that image. So that is how you can control uh, the rendering of a image during design time and runtime. From a behavior perspective, this component is quite simple. So if you have a look at the functionality, uh, a lot of this code over here is very uh, standard with every control that you have. So the uh, initialization methods uh, where I specify some uh, default data and this is uh, required to specify that. The initialize method, the dispose method, this the get is enabled or set is, is enabled may not be required and uh, also required is the get value and set value. And what you'll also see at the bottom here is the actual tick event that takes place uh, or should I say that is fired at the specified interval. So what you can see here, the raise event simply uh, tells the forms uh, engine to actually raise the controls tick event and by doing that it will raise any associated rules that have been configured on the form. And at the same time once we've raised that event we then set another timer for the uh, specified interval to fire the same event again and therefore you can create that uh, endless loop or endless timer. The other part of the, uh, the control or the components is the actual installer. 
So if I actually look at the program, um, this is very simplistic uh, and quite standard. Again, it connects to the K2 server, it specifies what the control name is, and goes and finds any existing controls with the same name, and then updates that control. So it is quite important that your control name be uh, unique. We also specify the actual namespace uh, of the control, or class, should I say, uh, that it will um, load into memory. And this is where we actually load the different events for this control. So in our case, we've only got one event, and that's the tick event. Right, so let's go and have a look at how we use this control. So in the Forms Designer, I'm going to create a new view. Let's add a new category, and let's call this my Hello World example. And in my Hello World category, I'm going to create a new view. And I'll just call this um, pop-up message. Click next. Click next. And you'll see here in the toolbox that we have a custom control called timer. So if I now drag that onto the actual canvas, you can see a clock uh, icon being displayed there and also the interval property. So if we change this to 5,000 milliseconds, uh, which is essentially five seconds, it will then raise the tick event um, when rendered at runtime. It will raise the tick event. So, what do we want to what what do we want it to do at each tick event? So we can add a rule here, where essentially we can say that when a control in the view raises an event, and essentially because there's only one control, it's picked up the timer control and also the default event for that control, which is the tick. What we'll also then do is say, let's associate a rule or an action uh, to that um, event. So there is a pop-up uh, message here. And we'll say, then show message to the user. And in our case, we're just going to put in hello world, uh, your tick event fired successfully. And we'll click OK and finish. And then we'll just finish the editing of the view. So if we now look at this view in action and we run it, you'll see that there's no control rendered, but we'll just wait five seconds and the event should fire. There you go. So if I now close that view and wait another five seconds, there you go. Right. So let's have another look at uh, some other examples. So I have uh, created a she price uh, editor or management page. So if I actually uh, run this page, what I've essentially done is I've actually created uh, two controls on the same view. So one control or timer control essentially is controlling the show and hide of this image. And of course that could be used for um, you know multiple purposes. So as an example, let's say when we changed a certain uh, priority or category on an item or record, this image could have been hidden and once they the made the change, you can then show the image. So if we take another record that's here and we refresh, you'll see that the information is loaded, but you can also see the refresh of the second timer actually uh, refreshing the data. So if we have to actually go and change this data and say, well, the new price is uh, now 2 and we'll click on save. On the refresh you'll actually see how this information changes to 2 and also that the history record has actually been updated. If we actually change the data to, um, or let's say the old price to 4 and we click save, the price has actually dropped so you can also see the icon changing. So again, from an end user perspective, the information to them is real time and dynamic, um, you know, providing quite a powerful uh, business, uh, business value. Thank you, that's our presentation.